Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first podcast of Strings Attached, here with Anna Castiglione and Ronia Monto. Hi! Um, we're both musicians and voice actors for interesting NPCs and a few other mods. First, we'll talk about um, various music mods for Skyrim that we've seen published, and then we'll talk a little bit about using music as assets in games, and we'll mention a few games there, and then uh, ambient music we've seen from different cultures, like Scottish and Japanese. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, our recording process and how we go about making music and getting them into mods. And we're off. Yes. Woohoo. Uh, second. Bit. So the first topic: the, some music mods we've seen for Skyrim. Uh, there's a there's one called Additional Music Project, which basically remakes all of the sounds and songs, all the ambient music, and then adds a whole bunch of so extra sound effects. And there's music mods that take songs from other games and put them into Skyrim, like Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Game of Thrones, Skyrim Sound Overhaul, and one called Become a Bard, and we'll talk a little about, a bit about each of those. Have anything you want to add right now, Ronya? Uh, not really. I think I'll come with my comments once we go through the subjects one by one. Um, do you have any of these overhaul mods? I have the additional music project. Um, okay. I really enjoy it because it, um, it's a lot of orchestration. I think they made pretty much all the songs with, with a full orchestra. I don't know how the original music was recorded, but this one definitely sounds a lot fuller to me, a lot more realistic as, as far as soundtracks. It sounds more like a movie soundtrack. Ah, does it add music or does it remove the old ones and replace it them? It does both. There's two parts. The first part is the replacement, for, mm -hmm. um, and then the second part is additional songs. And you can actually get the soundtrack by itself without putting it into the, into the game. In, in, my, bit... in my book as a musician, it's definitely a must-have. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm a bit torn on, on uh, mods like that because... I mean, Skyrim's original soundtrack is really beautiful, in my opinion, and it's, sometimes it feels a bit like like a middle finger to the composer to replace all the music yeah, with music I, from I, other games. I can kind of see how... Uh, I see your opinion on that. I'm not liking replacing music, but... Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's, it all comes down to personal preference again. So, like, true, like true. Any, any mods. But with completely replacing with another game, like putting in Game of Thrones music into Skyrim, I think is kind of wrong. Yes, um, I agree. Or putting in Zelda music to Skyrim. And I think that the composers and the directors of the game, um, they sort of had a vision when they made it, and the music adds to that vision, and then modders come and they ruin everything by, <laughs> by replacing all the music. Yeah. There, uh, Lindsay Sterling and Peter Hollins do a version of the main theme that plays when you load the game on the menu screen. Mm -hmm. And I think it's amazing because they're both really amazing musicians. Peter Hollins is a singer and Lindsay Sterling is a violin star. She, she's yeah. pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. She, she doesn't stay still when she plays the violin. She, she kind of jumps around yeah. like crazy. Yeah, she dances. Yes, and that's really impressive. Although... She's not really playing while she's dancing, you realize that. Uh, well, not in the recordings. <laughs> I've seen her live, and you're right, it's, it's not quite as good. It's all as... sinking. Yes. But anyway, it still makes it, she's still a wa wonderful performer. But there's this one mod called, called Become a Bard. It was on, uh, on Nexus a while back, and now I think it's only on Steam, mm -hmm. where you can actually pick up any instrument and play it and learn... Uh, Raise your speech skill, raise your bardic skill by playing in taverns. Mm -hmm. And then once you've played at enough taverns, you can play for the Jarl. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really nice immersion for people who like to play as a bard. It is. So. And what I also liked about that mod is that you can add your own songs to it. Um, so yeah. if you are musicians like me and Anna, you can just upload your own songs and then play them in game. <laughs> yeah, I think that's an awesome aspect. It is I really nice. I haven't figured that out yet myself, but there are instructions on how to do it. I don't have the mod anymore, but I had it at one point, and yes, I played my own songs in taverns, and I felt 
very special and awesome <laughs> until I logged out. <laughs> it goes really well with the mod called Wearable Loot, mm -hmm. where you can craft your own loot, and there are like three or four different looks you can have. Mm -hmm. You can walk around wearing the loot. The thing is, when you play it was become a bard, you have two loots, the one on your back and the one you're holding. Oh. Because it doesn't switch, because they're two separate mods. Right. So, aside from that little bit of weirdness, it's a, they're both great mods. Using music as assets. These are just a little bit about a couple of games that we've played. One is Zelda Ocarina of Time. I, the thing I love about that mod is that you collect songs and you use them to make things happen. Like, mm -hmm. a, special, a certain song will turn back time, or another song will change the weather. Another song skips forward and makes you an adult. Another song works to open locks. And after each great battle, you learn a new piece, like a, a serenade or a nocturne. Mm -hmm. It's pretty um, common in games. I think that they have something sort of similar in Dragon Age Origins, which is probably my favorite game ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, the bard character that you can pick up, um, she can sing songs in the middle of battle to give the rest of the party buffs and, and distract enemies and all that stuff. And that's a pretty interesting take, I think. Yeah, I just wish there was a little more to that aspect. Because mm -hmm. basically she just stands there in the battle and yells. Yes, it's very I know. Similar they... to the, very similar to the Templar's war cry, but with mm -hmm. just different effects. True, true. Like, I want to see her actually animated dancing around or something. <laughs> that would be p pretty cool. Make it more immersive for me. Mm -hmm. And then there's another mod, another game called The Bard's Tale, which I really like. And similar to Ocarina of Time, you collect songs, but in The Bard's Tale, you can use them in combat. Like, you can summon a creature to go fight for you. Mm -hmm. and then with you, a song. Yeah, with a song. <laughs> uh, you can build up your bardic skills, like dexterity. A higher dexterity makes you better at playing. And higher charisma means people like you more and give you discounts. <laughs> But you can also be a warrior bard, so uh -huh. you can devote more points to um, to playing or more points to being big and tough and not such a good player. What about ambient music from different cultures? There's a lot of that in Dragon Age. There's a lot of like Celtic sounding music mm -hmm. in the background. Like Lothering has a really nice kind of Scottish bagpipe music. It feels like you're out on the moor in a Scottish village. It's really charming. I also read somewhere that the elves from Dragon Age Origins are based on the Celtic people, so that's kind of fitting that there's there's this sort of theme in the game. And Liliana's song around the campfire? Yes. All in Elvish. It is. It's very pretty. I just wish I understood it. I wish there was some English version or at least oh, uh, lyrics posted somewhere. There is a translation. Ah. Yes. Exciting. You'll have to send me the link. <laughs> I will. <laughs> After the podcast, I shall you, send you the link. No, it's basically a morning song. Um, ah, there was a lot of lore in the game about that. It's something about the elves uh, before they became mortal. Um, the the elves, the the older they got, the the crazier they got. So after a time, the oldest elves chose to go to sleep forever. They didn't die. They just went to sleep because they were too dangerous to have around with their craziness. And then they sung this in Uthanera song for the elders, which is like a goodbye song. And in modern Dragon Age, it's become a funeral song of sorts. Death is just another beginning. One day, we must all shed our earthly bodies to allow our spirits to fly free. It's a beautiful sentiment, I think. One that brings peace and hope to the grieving. I think that's why Leliana sings it after the quest that I will not spoil. <laughs> well, we can say the name of the quest. It was... Uh, the name of the beast, yeah, I think. It. Yes. Uh, also, in Final Fantasy X, uh, they sort of tried to make the whole design of the game and the music very uh, Kyoto and Okinawa-inspired. So a lot of the music is very 
traditional Japanese inspired, while most other Final Fantasy games have this pop theme, at least the newer ones. So that's something I really liked about it. I didn't play the later ones. I saw them and played two, three, four, and seven. So I stopped at seven. But it mm-hmm. still had some really nice music. So even in its midiness. <laughs> <laughs> midiness? Yes. <laughs> As opposed to real instruments? Yes. <laughs> I've always really loved the main theme because it's harp and it's simple. And I, I Everything wanna... in harp is great. Yeah, I'm looking to find some version that I can play. Speaking of playing music, we're going to step into talk a little bit about how we compose and how we get our music into the game. Mm-hmm. You want to describe your overall or general composing process? Well, um, it depends a bit, but usually I pick up one instrument, whether it's the piano. I have this really old, slightly horrible piano that plays horrible MIDI sounds, but it's, you know, it's very convenient to sit down and and pick out chords on that before moving on to proper instruments. <laughs> um, I just basically write a chord progression, um, something that sounds good to my ears because I don't know any music theory really. And then I add a, a simple vocal line on top of that. And usually I continue from there by adding other instruments, some drums, harmonies, all that yummy stuff. But for the mod, unfortunately, I am only allowed to record one instrument and one voice. So the result is a little naked to my ear, but, you know, realism is important. (laughs) What about you? I do a little bit of both. Usually I'll start out with lyrics. And when I write lyrics, I'm very methodical. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's very structured, very poetic. And by poetic, I mean with steady rhythm. I don't do free verse, not anymore. Uh-huh. Um, and then if I manage to think of a tune, then I'll start kind of... Actually, sometimes I start with a tune in my head that that's already established, and then I'll adapt it to make it my own. Mm-hmm. Um, or sometimes I'll actually compose something new, but that doesn't happen very often. I may I composed Lunar Lake Serenata kind of on a whim, and mm-hmm. then my other piece, First Dawn, was actually for a, a film festival, and I decided to use it for the mod. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I re-recorded it. We face a whole uh, different set of challenges recording with real instruments as opposed to uh, VST and some ele- other electronic options. Yes, there's, for example, the the thing of um, white noise. Noise, sorry, noise. Um, <laughs> when we record with real instruments through a mic, um, we get all the background noise as well. And removing that in mixing can be quite a challenge. At least for me. Unless you have acoustic electric and have a direct input. But then that, I, I then... don't have that, unfortunately. And yeah, they don't really sound the same either. No. <laughs> when I try to record uh, some of the mod songs for interesting NPCs, it's been a real challenge for me. I finally found a way that I can balance quality and quality and convenience. Mm-hmm. So hopefully I can finally record the rest of those songs, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't record it at the computer usually because of noise and echo and stuff like that, but in my in the bedroom where it's all soft, I record the instrumental, and then mm-hmm. I mix it up in the computer, and then I go back to the recording area, and with headphones, I play the music and then add the voice, and then have to sync that. So there's two steps of mixing and syncing. That sounds really complicated. Yeah. It took and a pretty... lot of trial and error before I finally got that down. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. I actually, I use, um, I have a different laptop for my music and um, (laughs) I took my closet and I tore out the shelves and I put some padding on the walls. So when I record, I sit in my little closet with my little laptop and play (laughs) and sing. So uh, that eliminates most of the noise, luckily, but sometimes there's a little bit that seeps through. And and the foam on the walls, it also takes away all the natural r- reverb. So the raw files always sound a little harsh to my ears. And that I don't like. <laughs> so. You use Audacity, right? Do you use uh, no, n- not anymore. I use Sony Vegas. Sony Vegas. Oh, yes. And you said that's a video program? It is, yes. But it has a really good... Um, audio effects and, and mixing 
in there, so it works just as well as an audio editing program. So is it like a, a movie maker? Like Pretty mo- much, Windows yes. Movie maker? Uh, well, a bit more complicated than that, but yes, okay. essentially. It's <laughs> interesting. I mostly use Audacity, but I also use Reaper. So mm-hmm. so far I've only used Reaper for voice acting, but it also actually has a huge capability for complete musical mastering. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it has VST instruments, it has Cakewalk, which is a whole bunch of other instruments, and full drum set. I just haven't devoted the time yet to learning how to use all that stuff. It, yes, it it's seems... a bit of a hassle. The idea is overwhelming and scary. <laughs> but I, <laughs> it is. I'm sure, I'm sure if I eventually actually devote the time, it's probably not that hard. Well, I actually own a program called uh, Cubase. And that's apparently supposed to be this really professional music making program. But I open it up and I look at it and I go too many buttons and I close it again. (laughs) That sounds like me. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I I really should sit down and learn how to use it. So just how many songs have you added to to IMVC? Uh, Let me see. There's Gone with the Snow, Alessia's song... Mogus Mead, Eldie the Bear, one of the versions is mine. There's two different versions that are sung. I made a cover of Tears of the Hist and also a Mithril song, Spring. Yes, I think that's it. Which one's your favorite? Out of the songs I've made? Out of any of the songs. Uh, Tears of the Hist, definitely. I mean, I won't spoil the quest for those of you who haven't played it, but... It's it's a pretty um, emotional one. And at the end of it, when the song is played, I was just sitting there and being all like, oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to make a cover. That's really props to the, the composer of... Uh, I think it's Arisen? Yeah, I think it was Arisen. Yeah. Arisen, yes. Uh-uh. She's yeah. excellent. Excuse me. My favorite, <laughs> I'm kind of torn between uh, Ildi the Bear and uh, Dusk on Evil Harbor. Oh yes, I love that one too. It's gorgeous. I think they're just beautiful lyrics and really beautiful music, both of them. They're they're simple, but they're just really sweet. Oh, which version of Eldie the Bear? Your version. Oh, <laughs> they're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I like Gear Morris is okay. Nothing against Gear Morris. He's a wonderful composer. Yes. But I, his voice isn't my preference. I'll just say that. <laughs> Oh, I, I think that his voice has a lot of character, yeah. but the only thing that bothers me is um, that you can tell that some of the instruments are VST instruments. I've been damaged by my own real instrument, so I've become a horrible elitist. <laughs> and it's terrible, terrible. <laughs> oh, me too. Like pretty much all the recorded versions of harp that I've seen in any program or synthesizer just sounds like a piano. Mm, it does. It's pretty difficult to get it to sound just right. And it puzzles me because um, synthesized guitar sounds okay, and lute mm-hmm. and banjo, and harp is also a plucked string, so why can't people get that right? I don't know. Sure. I have no idea. And technically, piano is a string instrument, too. Yeah, <laughs> but you don't you don't really pluck. I think that's the thing, that when you pluck a harp, you get these sort of side noises, where you can hear the finger grab onto the string and pull it. And in synthesized intru- instruments, that goes away. So you can instantly tell that this is not real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's a shame, yes. A similar thing with guitar, unless you're using a pick. You yeah. And even if you are using a pick, when you, when you switch chords, um, you can hear the finger sliding along the strings. Yeah, it's true. Yes, it's... It's part of the instrument's charm, I think. So if you take that away, it sounds a bit odd to me. Exactly. Yeah, but I shouldn't complain because I actually... Oh, there's one more song that I made for the INPC mod, uh, The Journey. And I actually play my lute guitar in that song and it sounds pretty terrible. (laughs) And I think that's why Chris chose to make the Dragonborn play the guitar when you play that song. Because it really, the playing really is not ideal. <laughs> but at least it sounds, you know, real. I haven't heard that one yet. I'll have to listen to that. Is that on the blog? I think so, yes. So the mods I've added, or the songs that I've added so far are um, Amelie's song, which, with her quest. She, she composes a song. 
And I plan on doing a better version of that again, like the third version, now that I've finally got my recording process down. Mm -hmm. um, the first version was too slow. The second version was kind of off-key and pitchy. Mm -hmm. So the third version will hopefully be the keeper. Well, yeah. you're always your own worst critic. That's I mean, true. I've, I've told Chris, every time I send him a song, I'm like, oh, I, I don't really like how this sounds. I'm sorry, it's so pitchy. And he's like, what? <laughs> I don't hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you're being too hard on yourself. Also, I also plan on doing versions of all the other songs sometime, like especially Dusk and Elmo Harbor, I want to do that one. Mm. I would really love to do like proper collaborations with the other bards in the mod because I'm a huge fan of harmonies in songs. Oh, me too. Yes, and I would love to get someone to sing with me so that they can perform something amazing in game because a song gets so much more soul in it with just a little tiny bit of harmony. Yeah. Yes. I attempted to do something like that in, in my mod on NPCs. There's this band called Ocidol's Tears, mm -hmm. and for one song they do a couple parts. They're not exactly harmony, but they're people's, well, it's me singing together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the plan was to do a few harmonies. And that has the issue in the game of not properly syncing unless they're all in one voice file. Yeah. I, I, I think that um, it would be completely worth it to sacrifice a little bit of realism for that, that you just put them in the same sound file and the voice will come from one character, but that's okay, I think. Yeah. It should we do uh, two of my characters will actually sing together, they sing harmony. One is voiced by me, one is voiced by Michael, Bu Michael Buchin. Mm -hmm. um, so, and he has a really nice singing voice. So. Oh. But, and it, it sings okay together, but sometimes it's like there's a little bit of a delay and I know it sings, it plays perfectly when I uh, in Audacity. Yes, But in I game, know. they're a little bit off. Yeah, I know. It's the same with some of the, the songs uh, in um, INPC. Um, they will sound perfect when I send them, and then in game, they will lag. And it just... When you have a trained ear, it really hurts to listen to yeah. an unsynced song. But you know, any, are there any other instruments you wish were in game? Mmm... I think I will agree with you and say it would be great to have some sort of violin thingy. Yeah. I, I can't actually play the violin, um, but it's one of my favorite sounds. Maybe. Yeah. So the problem with that is that there is a violin mesh as a modder's resource. I yeah. Think, I think it's called modder's resource. and uh, but, the, but there's no animation to play it. It's just a static object that's a decoration. So if any mod animators are listening to this, make a violin animation, please. Yes, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> that would we, be awesome. We could call it the old time or medieval fiddle, the five string fiddle. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, we forgot one a point. Um, have you made any songs for any other? No, wait, did we talk about this already? Oh, we talked a little bit, but I can talk a little bit. We more. did. Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, my, my mod, Andunio Companion, began as a bard. because She started with just one song, uh, my, my song Fall of the Snow Elves, which I wrote mm -hmm. after I played Dawnguard the first time. I was just really inspired, and I, I wanted, I thought it was just a, a wonderful but very sad story about the fall, of how they fell and they were betrayed by the dwarves. Yeah. Um, sorry for spoiling it if you haven't played Dawnguard, but I think you really should have played it at this point anyway. <laughs> I haven't played Dog Guard, but it's okay. <laughs> oh. I, like I said, really wonderful story, but sad, and I wanted to make, you know, put, put it to music, you know? And mm. So I created this character. First idea was to put it with vanilla bars, but then I, that was before I knew anything about making bars and songs. Mm -hmm. So then I started adding other songs, like the, the Virtuous Thief and uh, my drinking song. So now she has about seven or eight original ballads, and mm -hmm. then I also added those to INPC. On NPCs, mm -hmm. and plus a couple of other, a couple of parodies, parodies to Irish tunes, <laughs> are in that mod. Because my character Darian is a pirate or ex-pirate, so he likes to wander around singing. Of course. Was an elegant craft. She was rigged for an aft, and how she glided out the dock. She had twenty-three masts, and she stood seven blasts, and we called her the old Seahawk. 
I haven't made any songs for any other mods yet, <laughs> but I've uh, composed a song for a indie video game, um, a French video game, uh, where where um, I had to make this theme song, this ethereal sort of mystical song for a, a character in the game, and it was a very interesting experience, but also very annoying because um, the people who were commissioning the song knew exactly what they wanted. And so every time I recorded a, a version of the song, they wanted something different, which is fine. But the problem was that I had to record everything over when they wanted one single thing changed. So I worked for wow. months on that one song and I had to sing in French and I don't speak French and I had to sit on Skype with one of the people and learn to pronounce certain words. <laughs> but what yes. about for your, your composing a piece? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had this problem before. Change one change one thing okay. like a chord and then you got to change the whole phrase because it doesn't fit anymore. Yeah, it just clashes with everything else. The two songs that I composed for IMPCs, Lunar Lake Serenata kind of came to me on a whim. I was just playing along and I think, oh, that, this sounds kind of cool. <laughs> but then uh, my other song, Dawn, First Dawn, actually I wrote for a soundtrack of, for a film festival, the 48-hour film festival. It's only a seven-minute movie and, and it's completely made in, in over a weekend, 48 hours. Uh -huh. Started out as a birthday song and then grew to what it is now. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's used as background music at the end of a quest. Are you a quick composer or a slow composer? It depends. That's it awesome. really depends on the piece. Lunar Lake Serenata was composed in about 15 minutes and then, you know, some more time to refine it. But um, First Dawn took, I actually wrote that in the Saturday morning during the, the weekend of 48 Hour Film Festival. Uh huh. Because it has uh, has phrases, it has like an A part, a V part, and then it has a, a violin okay. accompaniment, which isn't in the game, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to make that a flute okay. version. Ah, oh, right. I mean, I kind of play recorder, but I can't play the high notes. I just kind of squeak and break. Ah, uh, that's a practice thing. Yeah, it 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 was the same when I started playing the recorder. It 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 can get really squeaky really easily because the recorder is a very, how do you say, bratty instrument. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, but just practice and you'll get it, I promise. Yeah, I really wish you could play my glass flute. That would sound really nice. It's not really glass, it's crystal. So mm -hmm. I got it at, um, at NAM, which is a music festival or a music con. So it's, it's mm -hmm. like this, quote, indestructible, that's kind of crystal cool. material. How does it sound? Does it sound so, uh, like a normal flute or? It sounds like a wind chime. <laughs> oh, um, that's so pretty. Like, like very clear, not really bell-like, but well, yeah, like a wind chime, I guess it. I love that. When it's pl when it's played well. I can't make it sound like that yet. Oh, well, practice. I have uh, one instrument that I would like to use in the mod. Um, but it's you can't do very much with it because it's it's only got five strings and you can't really tune them like with a guitar. You can just pluck them and that's it. Um, it's called a cantele. Do you know what that is? I've heard the name. I'm not really familiar yeah, with it. Yeah, it's the Finnish uh, sort of national instrument. It's like a tiny little harp or lyre and it has this really lovely bell-like sound. It's gorgeous. Ooh. Dulcimer is another good one to use. Sorry, what? Um. The dulcimer, the strum dulcimer. Oh, yes, yes, I love that one. I wish I could afford one. Instruments are expensive. <laughs> well, the strum dulcimer aren't very expensive. They're like 150 bucks. That's not a lot, actually, now that you mention it. But I'm Compared. Yeah, compared <laughs> to like a harp. I'm trying to save up for a bigger harp, a slightly better one, because the, the one I have now, it's, it's nice, but it was really cheap, and it suffers for that. Um, some of the strings have a really annoying side noise. But a proper harp can cost over a thousand. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, the one I have is a, it's an Andrew Sterling. It's actually from New Zealand, mm -hmm. which is my favorite harp. He actually uses a technique that he, used, that he uses in shipbuilding. He's also a shipbuilder, mm -hmm. and which is using aluminum impregnated wood. So the, the harp has metal in it, oh. and it also has automobile paint. So it's actually bright purple. <laughs> Your harp is bright purple? So, yeah, it's not 
not traditional looking at all, but it sounds amazing. Yeah, the sound is more important. I mean, my, mine is really pretty. It has all these lovely little carvings in the wood. The, the sound is kind of mediocre, so <laughs> definitely go for the bright purple harp. <laughs> I think the, the metal in the wood makes it resound better. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't need to be amplified if it's in a, a, good, acoustic, a good acoustic room, mm -hmm. I guess. Oh, yeah, I did mean to ask you something. Um, do you ever perform, like, in real life? I have performed sometimes, not as, not as much as you. Oh. <laughs> uh, I performed violin for weddings a few times. Oh, that's awesome. But I haven't really... And I, I performed harp at a few parties, just uh, not paid, just like as favors for the host. Uh -huh. That's really about it, but I would like to perform more. I just haven't put myself out there or promoted myself. I'm kind of bad at promoting it, myself. Me too. I'm really awful at it. Um, I, I never thought that I would ever get a chance to play uh, live because I, I didn't actually think I was good enough. But then I got the opportunity once and um, after that I got a lot of people coming up to me and asking for my contact information because they wanted to hire me for another gig or another gig. And that was really amazing for my confidence. So I think, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, you should just put yourself out there and yeah, hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ready to wrap up? Yes, I'm pretty sure I'm ready. Well, I hope this was enjoyable to some of you listening. I hope it wasn't too awkward. And hopefully you'll join us again for next time. Yes, if Chris lets us do another because of how terribly awkward we are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Anna and Ronya out. Bye. Thanks for listening. This is Viridian, and you're watching the 3D NPC Podcast Network. You may recognize my voice from my previous work, How to Subscribe to a Podcast. It's real easy. You just press the button. If you like the podcast, then congratulations, you have an excellent taste. Press the subscribe button to confirm. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you didn't, it's likely you just need to turn the volume higher. Click on any of the boxes to watch another video. Go on, don't be shy. I'll wait here while you click them. Every time someone subscribes, an angel gets their wings. But only the ones you like. Don't worry, there is a system in place. I'm not even getting paid to do this. But if we get enough subscribers, Chris has promised me a coupon for KFC. So please subscribe. I'm so hungry. Subscribe. You might regret it in the morning, but we promise you won't get pregnant. If you like this podcast, we have two other shows. They also have people talking about stuff. Subscribe, and maybe they'll make the total number of subscribers public. Right now, it's just too embarrassing to show anyone. This channel has a very American theme. So why did they get a Polish guy to narrate? Two words. Fun service. One lucky subscriber will get an autographed picture from me. The picture will be of Gabe Newell, but it will have my name on it. Did you hear about what happened to the last person who didn't subscribe? Nothing happened, actually. But is that what you want? Nothing. I bet you want something to happen to you. And it will, if you press the button.